Hey everybody, it's Troy with Evo Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at Manjaro Gnome 21.1.6, the most recent update. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and like the videos that we're doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. First thing we're going to do is open up Manjaro's website. It's manjaro.org. I will be sure to include that link down below in the description. When you go to the website, you've got a couple different things you can look at. you got downloads, learn more, get Manjaro shell, and then you got features, donate, shop, news, more. So if you want to download it, just click on the download button. And their main additions, of course, are XFCE, KDE Plasma, and GNOME, which are all 21.1.6. Now, if you want to try out one of the community editions, you can go up here to editions, click on it, slide down to community. You've got Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, i3, Mate, and Sway. All of those are on the 21.1.2, except for Sway, it is a daily release. So you can pick your downloads, or you can go over and you can look at features. You can look at donate, shop, news, more. And let me tell you something. The Manjaro forums are awesome. If you go under more, you've got lists, support, packages, about. And they give you a lot of different places you can go, not only to help the project, but at the same time get help for your installation. Now I'm going to close out of this because one of the things I love about Manjaro is it's one of the Linux distributions that gives you a welcome screen right off the bat. It's called Manjaro Hello, and it lets you know you're in Pavo 21.1.6. And then it gives you a lot of quick links down here for things that you might have questions about or just want to get more information about the distribution itself. Under documentation, you've got a README, you've got a release info, you've got a wiki. The wiki is invaluable. Do not forget that. Support, there's the forum. Should you have any problem, you can zip on over to the forums. And I do recommend that when you get over there, go ahead and set yourself up an account if you're going to run Manjaro on a daily basis. It just helps you get questions answered Discover Software Center, mailing lists, get involved, development, donate, and then, of course, you can launch the installer. Now, if you don't want the welcome screen to show up every time you boot up, you can click it off right here, close it, and then it will not start up at launch. But you can always come up here, click on that, and just type in Manjaro Hello, and you can find it and click it and bring it right back up if you need it. So that's simple enough. It is the GNOME desktop, so you do have a panel up top, and then they've got a dock down on the bottom. Now up top on your panel, you just click right here. You've got wired connection. You can set up your Wi-Fi, let you know how much battery life you got left, settings, lock, power off, log out. And then, of course, your update manager right here, the little shield with the check mark says that you're up to date. And then you've got your notifications calendar right here, specific events you might have set up, or select weather location. That way you would have weather right here. If you're in the middle of doing business, let's say you're on a Zoom call or you're on Discord and you don't want to be disturbed, you just come down here, click on the Do Not Disturb, and any notifications that come in will not be making loud noises during your conversation. So let's close out of that. Of course, you can come over here to Activities. If you click on that, it brings up your desktops. You can scroll through those with the mouse wheel. Let's close back out of Activities. Come down to the dock. You've got Firefox, which we just looked at. You've also got files. If you open up files, it is a pretty decent looking little file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your regular home folders right here. If you would like to make your home folders a little bigger, all you got to do is click on the little arrow, bump it up if you want to. You can bump it up to 100. You can make them pretty much 133% zoom. I'll go ahead and back it back down to 67. You can put them in a list view if you would like to or leave them at a grid. And then you have... Things over here, you can show hidden files if you want. You can show the sidebar or not show the sidebar. Preferences, keyboard shortcuts, help, about files. It's quick, it's fast, it stays out of your way so you can get things done. Let's close out of that. Then you have your text editor. Should you have to do anything in your configuration files and such, you can open up your text editor, open up that file, make the changes, save it, reboot, and you're good to go. So we'll close out of that. You also have Terminal. Let's go ahead and open up the Terminal. I want to see if they have HTOP installed. They do not, so we will go ahead and open up Top. And as you can see, they do have Top installed. 
At present, I have two gigabytes of memory issued to this virtual machine. We are at rest with just the terminal open using 797 megabytes of RAM. So that's not too bad at all. That's probably between an XFCE and KDE resource usage. So that's not too bad. I've seen some GNOME versions out there running in there at 1.2, 1.3. So this is definitely lightweight. It's quick. That's what you pretty much get with any Arch install. So we'll close out of that. Then you come down here, you've got screenshot. If you wanted to take a screenshot, just click on it. It'll open up. Do you want to do screen, window, or selection? Pick what you want. I'm going to pick selection. Go ahead and click on take a screenshot. Then you just pick the area you want to screenshot. And it takes it and it saves it for you. You can copy it to clipboard or save. So I'm going to cancel. And then over here, you have install Manjaro Linux. Let's go ahead and check out some of the applications. You've got Geary Mail. Real good mail client. You've got accessories, which have icon browser, transmission, weather. If you wanted to click on weather, it would bring this up. Search for a city. I'll put Dallas, Texas. We'll go ahead and put Dallas Love Field. And then you've got your weather right there. So if you close out of that and go back to it in the future, when you open it up, it will show you your weather. Also, if you go up here and click... It'll have your weather embedded into your notifications and calendar drop down. So that's just a little something there. So we'll go back up, go back to accessories. You've got Cavanta Manager. You've got Tweaks. Let's go ahead and open up the Tweaks. Right here gives you the ability to make some changes to your GNOME environment. You have General, which is animations, suspend when the laptop lid is closed, over amplification. If you want to allow the volume above 100%, you just click on that and it'll give you that access. And then Appearance. You can change your themes across the applications, cursors, icons, shells, sound, and then your background image and things you can change right here. You can also adjust your fonts if you want to. You can go in here, pick a different font, adjust the size of a font, and then you'll be good to go there. I'm going to cancel. And if you just want to scale everything up, you just come down here to scaling factor, and you can bump it up to like 1.05, and it'll change everything. That's up to you, however you want to use it. Keyboard and mouse, startup applications. Right now, these are the startup applications that we have. If for some reason you install this application and you find out it's starting up at boot and you don't want it to, you just come over here. You can remove it from starting up and then you'll have to manually click on it to open it up. That way you can save some system resources. Top bar, activities overview hot corner, which is this right here where you click it and it brings everything up and you can scroll through your desktops. If you don't want those there because you do have the ability to bring them up in the app menu, you could always turn that off and the activities button would disappear. And then, of course, you've got clock. You can add the weekday to the clock if you wanted to. Calendar, you can add week numbers to the calendar. So if you click that on, drop your calendar down, you'll notice over here it's showing you which week of the year you're in. So we can go ahead and close back. Window title bars right here. Double click, toggle to maximize, middle click, none, secondary click, menu. You could do right click and you get a menu or double click and it maximizes, double click and it minimizes. Now, if you use that and you don't want these buttons on the bar, all you have to do is come right here, shut those off and those buttons disappear and you still have the ability to maximize and minimize with a double click. And then placement, you can have your buttons on the left or on the right. And then windows and then workspaces. So we'll go ahead and close out of tweaks. Go back down, open this back up. We've also got caffeine, characters, fonts, firmware, extensions, disks, clock, to-do list. You've got add and remove software. Let's open that up. One thing you want to do right off the bat, if you're new to Manjaro or you're new to Arch in general, is you want to go up here to where the three dots are, click on those, go down to preferences, go to third party, You'll want to enable AUR support and also check for updates. Then you'll want to go back to general. Scroll down and it'll say use mirrors from worldwide. Refresh those mirrors. Click on it. Takes anywhere from three to five minutes. The mirrors will refresh. You will have the most recent, up-to-date, quickest links. So when you do downloads and do updates, they will go expeditiously and it won't take too long. So we'll close out of that. Generally, in a virtual machine or on a live USB, it would be hard to find software, but I'm just going to do a quick search for something like MailSpring, hit enter, and it doesn't seem to be showing. I know it's in the Arch user repository. There it is. It popped up. 
Now, the local repositories, after you refresh your mirror list, you'll be able to access all of that, whether you're in a virtual machine or on a live USB. But at this point in time, I'm not going to do that, but you can do that if you decide you want to. So let's back out of that and close there. That's how you install software. Then you've got GThumb, Maps, and then Layouts. Layouts is really interesting. If you open that up, at present, you can see that we're using the one that's highlighted in green. Now you can change your layouts if you would like to. If you would want to go with something like the Manjaro Legacy look, you just click on it and apply. It moves your dock over to here. And then if you wanted to go with something like a classic gnome, you drop that down, you lose your top bar, and then everything drops down here, and you've got a more Windows XP, Windows 7 type feel, if that's what you're into. And then, of course, you can always go with the Unity. The Unity is the classic that Ubuntu used to use. Let's go ahead and apply that. And it puts your top bar back up here, and then you've got your sidebar over here the way Ubuntu used to have Unity. Now, you can also go down to just the Manjaro, which is the one we were just on. And then, of course, the GNOME look to where you actually have to click on activities to get your dock to show up. We'll go ahead and click back off of that. And then tiling. Let's apply that. Then you have more of a tile look, type to search, things like that. It's real handy. You can change your layouts pretty quick, pretty fast, pretty expeditiously. So it makes things a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the Manjaro look. And now that we have that, I'm going to close out of that. We will come back down here, open this up. You got Lollipop, Document Scanner, Office. This comes with only Office out of the box. If you've never used only Office, it gives you a free version and a paid version. If you just want to use the desktop editors and not have to worry about doing anything on the cloud or you want to use your own cloud services and upload and download yourself, it's absolutely free, so you can ignore this. Now, what you do want to do, for me, it's a little small. Like when you go over to edit a document, Everything is a little small to me. That's my personal opinion. It may be just fine for you, but I'm going to show you real quick how to adjust these and how to make the size a little bigger. So let's close out of that. Go over to settings. If you want to go interface scaling auto, I would actually go to 100, and then I would do a dark theme, and then I would apply. Let's go ahead and bump that to 150 and apply. Now when you open a document up, everything's a little bigger. It's easier to see. And then you'll notice as the icons fill in, everything is a lot easier to manage. So that's only Office. It comes with document, spreadsheet, and presentation. So you basically get a Word, Excel, and PowerPoint alternative. And it's 100% compatible with Microsoft. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then we will come back down, document scanner, system tools. You've got hardware locale, Manjaro notifier, system monitor, time shift. Once you get your system completely set up, which means email account set up, all the applications downloaded that you want to use, you come over to Time Shift. If you use the BTRFS file system, ButterFS, BetterFS, whatever you want to call it. If you didn't, leave it on RSync. If you did, click on ButterFS. Then you'll want to click Next. Basically, what it'll say is we're going to take a snapshot. What it will do is take a complete snapshot of your system. Once it has that, moving forward, when you take snapshots, it'll only take snapshots of things that have changed on your system. So that way, should you have a catastrophic failure with your system, you can always load back in, go to time shift, restore it to a time that your system was set up and no problems. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then we'll back in the menu. Then you've got your web apps and you've got cheese. Next thing we're going to look at is just the overall settings of the system. Manjaro settings. You can come over here and look at locale settings, language packs, find out which kernel you're on. If you want to update the kernel, you can. Time and date, hardware configuration. If you've got an NVIDIA card and you install this, you can come over here and install your NVIDIA drivers for that, whether you want to go with proprietary or with open source. We can quit out of that, go back up, settings again, and then you'll have your full settings right here, which give you the ability to deal with your network, Bluetooth, background if you want to change the background of your system wallpapers will populate you can scroll down find a wallpaper that you want let's see let's just change it to do something different how about we go with something like that and as you can see that's a very beautiful background it's got the manjaro logo up there then notifications search applications online accounts now one thing i really like about geary mail is if you go in here and set up your online accounts like your googles your facebook's Whatever you might have email through, once you set those up, Geary Mail will actually take the information 
from your online accounts, and it'll use that to get your emails going. Then you've got sharing, power, displays, mouse and touchpad, keyboard, printers, removable media. So you've got a lot of settings you can adjust there. But that's a quick look at Manjaro GNOME 21.1.6. What do you think? Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel is doing and like the videos, you can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next video.